welcome to part one of one of our video tutorials. This week we'll be looking at the elusive JPEG compression. Ah, oh, JPEG! <laughs> You've probably all heard of a JPEG file, but do you really know what it does or how it works? JPEG is probably the most common compression standard found for still images today. It is used on a wide variety of platforms, from Facebook pictures to the way a digital camera compresses its images. The reason this standard has found such popularity is because of the ingenious way in which it works. JPEG, or Joint Photographic Experts Group, is a digital compression format used for saving still images at a lower bit rate whilst retaining the original quality. <laughs> JPEG files are so popular because they can be compressed selectively. You can choose how much unnecessary image data is discarded in order to make the file smaller. As a result, they can be more easily and quickly conveyed electronically and will download more quickly on the website. <laughs> Two, one, booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery, returning to the space station, paving the way for future missions beyond. The first step of JPEG compression is turning the image from RGB to YCRCB. This gives the image a luminous value of Y, which can then be decreased by up to a factor of 2. This can be done as the human eye is less sensitive to changes in the higher frequencies of the spectrum. Next, the image gets divided into 8x8 segments known as macro blocks. The DCT, an algorithm shown here, converts the individual pixels in each macro block from the spatial domain into the frequency domain. It replaces the colour data for each pixel with a value that is relative to the entire matrix that is being analysed. This does not compress the image, but simply replaces 8x8 pixel colour values for 8x8 DCT coefficients. You dummy! Bye. Three and a half down, two twenty feet. Five four forward, drift into the right a little. Thirty seconds forward. Tranquility base here. The eagle has landed. The next step is compressing the image. Depending on the compression quality the user has depends on how accurate the image is to the original. From there, it calculates two tables of quantization constants. One for luminance, Y, and another for chroma, CRTV. The DCT that was calculated earlier is then divided by its corresponding constant and rounded to the nearest <laughs> hole. Many of the numbers in the higher frequencies will then be rounded to zero, and the larger frequencies will not be as precise as the original. It is this rounding off of frequencies that leads to the big compression rates in JPEG pictures. In conclusion, JPEG is probably the most popular form of compression, and it's easy to see why. Low bit rates and high quality are what people strive for when it comes to displaying images on the web. However, it isn't without its downsides. Things like not supporting transparency often leads to websites using PNG and bitmap images for its logos and graphics. Also, every time a JPEG is saved, quality is lost, and upsizing images often leads to bad results. An example of an upsized image can be seen here. Notice how the pixels and artifacts are more obvious. Not pretty! See here how this image that has been saved many times has lost precision and quality. This is why you must be careful when saving an image too much. JPEG compression should be avoided with images with sharp changes of tone. Oh my god, tone! Things like diagrams and images with less than 256 colours tend to not compress very well. <clears throat> Take that 256 colors. Kaya! Remember, this is just the first step of a wonderful journey for the land of compression. Compression! No, 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 no! Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's video podcast. For a more in depth look into JPEG compression, check out some of these videos and websites. or just watch our video again.